Right, um, I welcome you to this discussion. Um, this is the set of additional practice questions that I gave you. You looked at the first of these three questions in your previous tutorial. And this, in this particular tutorial, I'm going, in this particular video, I'm going to discuss question two. Um, I will not necessarily discuss every other question, but only the critical parts to help you then understand what you should be doing, right? <coughs> now, as part of the explanation, I propose to do the following. Let me insert some bullet points. Sorry for the noise outside. We have to to make peace with the noise of these renovations and other things going on. Now, according to the monetarist uh, tradition, based on the quantity theory of money, inflation is every time and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. Now, you would have done a quantity theory of money in economics one or two, and certainly in economics 202 you might have discussed it as well um, in 102 when you were looking at inflation that's where you would have discussed it and you defined inflation as too much man chasing too few goods as just one of the definitions now the quantity theory of man itself comes from the equation of exchange which is written as money supply times the velocity of money that is the rate at which money changes hands is equal to the price level times initially it was volume of transactions but now it has been changed to the quantity of output so as you can see price times quantity gives us our nominal GDP here that's the nominal um, level of output in the economy and this is your money supply by the rate at which money changes hands now <clears throat> the idea here is that we are saying this P here the price level is determined by the behavior of M so we have to rearrange this relationship in such a way that we now have P is equal to MV over Q now the problem is this V here is something that is much difficult uh, to understand, uh, to estimate as it were, but the general assumption that is usually made is that let's assume that it's a relatively stable so that we can regard it as a constant. So if we do that, then we can rewrite this as some constant k by m over q okay now m is nominal money balances um, is your nominal money supply whereas q is the physical quantity of output so here this ratio is saying for each unit of output how many units of nominal money do we have so if you, if we if this ratio is bigger than one, it actually means that we have too much money chasing too few goods. That's what they are talking about, okay? So then this implies that we can then state this uh, relationship in a um, in an econometric sense. Um, let's do that where we should be doing it here. So let's state the equation. The equation now is going to be P is equal to some beta 0, which is your intercept, plus beta or B1 
which is your slope coefficient since k is assumed to be stable which may be a very restrictive assumption um it can take any value and we can assume that it takes the value of one it's just a scaling factor so it doesn't change anything if we assume that it's one so then this is multiplied by your m over q okay and you add this you add to this the error term okay all these are subscripted with a t because this is time series data so that's the model you would have stated um <clears throat> what are your expectations of course from the very statement we have up there uh, it's clear that there's a positive relationship okay so your b1 is expected to be greater than zero um, it should be small b your b1 the b1 should be greater than zero because as your man supply to quantity increases so will the inflation um, level since you're saying too much money will be chasing too few goods and uh, then you are required to estimate this very model you have stated here so what we need is to go to our data let's create our p now remember that this is stated in percentage form because you said your your nominal over your real times a hundred okay that's how you got this so in fact in base here the price level is one so let's try to to say then this over a hundred and then we can just drag to the end and let's have our m uh, m over q okay Let, let's try to 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 express it that way now the challenge that we have is that they are measured in different scales so we need to transform either these to thousands or these to millions so what we can do is we also want to express this thing uh, m as a percentage of q so we want it to be in percentage form okay so what we're going to do is to say let's convert our man supply to millions which means we must divide it by a thousand here to transform it to millions then we divide that by our real gdp uh, let me just supply another bracket at the beginning right so we multiply that by a hundred and we drag so that's what we have so what you can see is that man supply in 2016 was about just 31 percent of the gdp so you didn't have too much money chasing too few goods but as you move into 2019 notice uh, into 2019 quarter two you now have more uh, more nominal man supply relative to gdp and so the the percentage is now much larger um and of course this is uh, testified to by the the, the 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 return of high levels of inflation in zimbabwe <coughs> so if you were as part of which is good practice when you're doing modeling you can just sketch the graph to have a sense of how these variables are related to each other so let's try to do that now because one is measured in percentage form another one is is just an index not in percentage form they should not share the same axis so i'm going to we have a secondary axis for my inflation for my price level that is the cpi what you can observe is that they tend they are moving together actually as your month supply moves uh, because 
uh, increase at a faster rate here, not so, so that your prices are doing the same. And what starts to rise much faster is month supply before inflation does. So inflation responds with a lag, which would seem to confirm month risk's argument that it is too much money chasing too few goods that is behind the inflation scourge. Right, so let's let's now estimate our regression um, data analysis. Uh, we want a regression here, okay. Let's pick our dependent variable which is P. Let's pick our x variable which is this. Um, labels okay um this is the output we get let's just put those p values into percentage form so you can see that this is a, an extremely extremely significant relationship okay <clears throat> right uh, so you are squared there is about 0.887, that means about 88.8% .8 of the, the variations in the price level are actually explained by changes in mind supply, which seems to agree with our theory. Now, so we have estimated, you are to interpret uh, the... I will interpret the intercept for you here. Um, I mean, the, the slope coefficient is the most important one, right? <clears throat> First of all, we can see that it conforms to theory. It is positive, and we had said that we expect this slope coefficient to be positive, and indeed we found it to be positive here. But what does this number mean? Be in mind that your your explanatory variable is measured in percentage form so what what is changing there are percentage points so when you interpret you should be careful you can't say a one percent increase in mass supply it's a one percentage point increase okay so then you can say a one percentage point increase in the M3 GDP um, ratio leads to a 0 0.04, 0 0.0411 units increase in the price level, in the price level on average remember that your price level here is an index okay so it is a pure number it is not it is a unitless number that's why i use the word units there right so we are done notice this is very important very important if your variable is measured in percentage form let's say like your gdp no 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 like your interest rates your inflation rate, uh, other um, measures that are in percentage form, if they change, they are changing by percentage points. They are not changing by 1%, by 2%, whatever. Okay. Having done that, of course, the constant you can always interpret it. This is the, the average level of... Um, this is the average price level when the ratio of nominal money to Q is 0%. Okay, that is if, in other words, it's an economy without money at all, then your M there will be 0 over Q, you get a 0. So your prices, your average price level will be negative. Okay. It doesn't make much sense, but that's what what it means. Then we are required as well to carry out a test of significance. 
Now, what we're going to do here, and we have to do it at the 1% level of significance, we have to state our now hypothesis. Now, the now hypothesis professes that this slope coefficient is zero. That is, you are saying, no, no ways, my supply does not influence price levels. Then your alternative, your alternative hypothesis says, look, according to theory, we know that man supply is a positive influence. So we are doing a one-sided one -sided test here. This also means that we only have one critical value um, at the 1% level of significance. So let's state our decision criterion. It is if T OBS is greater than T critical, reject H0. Otherwise, fail to reject it. Okay. Having done that, um, then we we are supposed to find the T critical itself. Okay. The T critical itself. T critical itself, which is made up of our sample size from this data is 13 units. So that's the degrees of freedom at 13, which is your sample size minus the two coefficients we estimated, the slope coefficient and the intercept. Um, and we are doing that at 0 0.01. Our alpha is 0 0.01. It's, an, it's a one-sided test. What do we get? We come to the tables. Uh, my computer is just misbehaving as well. Okay, <clears throat> so the upper row here tells us the probabilities in one area like they show in the graph. The lower part is the sum of the probability in this area and that area. But here we are doing a one-sided test, which means we are only looking at one area, okay? So we want 1% in this area according to what we just stated, and this is 1% here. So we come down until we get to 11 degrees of freedom. This is 11 under 1%. We get 2.718, okay? Um, that's 2.718. 2.718 that's your critical value then we must calculate our t ops our t ops is equal to b 1 and we are dividing it by its standard error um, of b1 Of course, the now hypothesis claims that your B1 is zero. So what you are actually doing, if we were to state it in full, you are saying your B1 minus zero, like that. So you are saying minus what the now hypothesis claims over the standard error of the estimated coefficient. Um, and this, of course, means you are talking about 0 0.0411 divided by um, 0 0.0044, 0 0.0044. And as you can see from what they calculated, you get 9. That is that divided by that, you get that. That's 9.334, 9.334. Now, if you look at this number, the T obs here, and compare it to the critical value there, it is clear because we are dealing with 1%. So, in place of 1.725 here, we actually have 2.718. And you got 9 point something, which is even far to the right of the critical value, which means you are in the shaded region. And the shaded region is a region where you reject the now hypothesis. So then what is the story? Since T 
tops is greater than t critical reject h naught and conclude that at the one percent level of significance changes in the m to gdp ratio have a significant positive influence on the price level notice i have put the word positive there because our alternative talks about a positive effect okay essentially that's that's the idea you already have done everything that is expected of you then the last question is an alternative way of testing the same hypothesis but here we profess rightly that we don't know everything these point estimates might be misleading so we want to construct a 99% confidence interval and this requires us to have our B1 plus or minus T critical with 11 degrees of freedom and 0 0.01 is our alpha and we are multiplying this by the standard error of of b1 of b b1 okay so this means we are talking here about 0 0.0411 plus or minus 2.718 that's the, the critical value we already obtained and we are multiplying that by 0 0.0044 which is the standard error there and what do we get now let me try to work that out very quickly so we have 0 0.0411 minus 2.718 by 0.0044 answer we get 0 0.029 is less than true b1 that is population b1 and this in turn is also less than true um, 0 0.0411 plus 2.718 by 0 0.0044 which is 0 0.053 okay so this is the the confidence interval now remember that our now hypothesis professed that the the true beta is actually zero okay so here we are talking about true beta here just in case someone misunderstands what i'm doing there <coughs> okay so the true b1 is zero that is the population one is equal to zero so so it claims that the true b1 is zero so what you need to do is to check if zero lies in between these numbers if it lies outside that range then we reject the now hypothesis as you can see zero is outside this range now since true b1 equal to zero lies outside the 99 percent confidence interval we reject h naught and conclude that changes in the m to gdp uh, ratio do influence the price level positively okay Essentially, that's the idea behind your, uh, your confidence interval analysis. 
So I will stop here. I hope this will be very helpful to you.